All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. My name is Allison Matarisi, and I am the Director of Housing Assignments, and I am here with my team. Um, that includes Ashley Ladyman, who is our Associate Director, Josh Miller, who is our Coordinator, Paige Farst, who is our Communications Strategist, and Haley Hollenberg, who is our Graduate Assistant. The goal of tonight's presentation is to walk you all through what the assignment process looks like for the 21-22 academic year. So we'll walk through everything. As we get later into the presentation, we will open the forum up for you to ask any questions that you may have. Thanks to those of you that submitted ahead of time. Um, I feel like a lot of the questions that you asked are cer certainly going to be addressed in the content that we cover. If you have any specific questions that pertain um, really solely to you and your situation, please don't hesitate to email us afterwards. We are certainly happy to discuss that with you and help you navigate the process to the best of our ability. So we're gonna get started. First off, I do wanna take the time to reinforce the undergraduate residential requirement. Uh, this is a board of trust policy, which has been in place since the 1950s, which does state that all unmarried undergraduate students are required to reside on campus unless space is unavailable. We typically have a very high percentage of our students that reside on campus and off-campus authorization is usually reserved for a limited number of fourth year students. So as you start to make plans for future years, I just want you to keep this in mind going forward. Some general information about the assignment process. We utilize an aspect of a seniority driven random selection in pretty much all of our processes. So we use, utilize a point system. All rising fourth year students or greater have four points, rising third year students or greater have three points and rising second year students have two points. Your points and your status are determined by your term of entry or when you first enrolled as a first year student if you were a transfer student. We do not consider credit hours. You can never have any more than four points. So if you take a fifth year, you do not get a fifth point at that stage. You will max out for four. We do have a variety of housing assignment processes. These are open to all students that in the event that they're eligible for them. Now, there are a few exceptions to things, but students are certainly welcome to participate in any process that they choose. The only caveat is that once you select a room, once you have a room assignment, or you are committed to a program, you are no longer permitted to participate any further. Okay? Our processes run consecutively versus concurrently. So if you want to apply for one process and you're unsuccessful, it has no bearing on future processes. And then we utilize an online room selection, especially since the vast majority of this process is going to be taking place after you leave at the end of the spring semester. The online room selection is a very simple tool for you to use and you can literally participate from anywhere. Okay. Changes that we have for the 2021-2022 assignment process for those of you that are rising third year students or greater. We have really made this process shorter and simpler compared to previous years. Um, we are certainly under some restrictions due to COVID-19 and time constraints that we had to consider as well when designing the process. Carmichael Towers East is scheduled to close this May. Branscombe, Brand, uh, Branscombe Quad, which is composed of Lupton, Stapleton, Scales, and Vaughn, will return to upper division housing for students at its designed capacity, which is double rooms. The Chafin Apartments, which are for four students, will be available. Uh, these were offline this year. And we are also adding the Village at Vanderbilt townhouses and South Tower to our housing inventory. Uh, these facilities are located adjacent to the commons. 
We are also doing a one year suspension of the class cohort allocations in the residential colleges and they will be assigned via a true seniority driven random selection. So upper division student housing options. Wanna go over what buildings these include and then we'll talk about some room types. First off, our living learning communities. Some folks may have already applied for these um, and these applications are now closed, but these include Mayfield, McGill and McTeer. We have our residential colleges, which currently at four are E. Bronson Ingram, Moore, Zeppos College and Warren College. As a friendly reminder, there is no CASAM. CASAM is actually a student center. Um, it is located between Warren College and Moore College. I can guarantee you no one is living there. For traditional upper division housing, that will include Cole and Tolman, the four buildings for Branscombe, Chafin, Morgan and Lewis, and then the village townhouses in South Tower. Okay. Due to COVID-19, we are not able to do in-person um, open houses this year, but we have a variety of photos and video tours that are available on our website under the residence hall section. Definitely encourage you to look through that content there to help you make informed decisions about what processes you wanna participate in. Now, within these different buildings, we have a variety of different room types. Okay. So we have traditional singles. That is just one room, similar to what, if you are a first year student, the design that you would live in now. Cole, Tolman, and the residential colleges have single rooms. Traditional doubles, Branscombe, Tolman, and the residential colleges. And then a distinction between apartments and suites. Okay? Apartments have full kitchens. They also have a living and dining space, a bathroom, and bedrooms, which those bedrooms could be single bedrooms or double bedrooms. And we have four different types of apartments. We have two person apartments, three person apartments, four person apartments, and six person apartments as well. And then we also have suites, which similar to apartments, however, they only have a convenience kitchen, which that means that there is no oven or range. Um, you simply have counter space, a sink, a microwave, and a refrigerator. It also includes a dining and living area, a bathroom, and all single bedrooms. Suites are restricted to the residential colleges. Four person suites are available in all four residential colleges, while the five person and six person suites are strictly located in Warren and Moore colleges. So let's talk about step one, applying for housing, housing registration. This is a yearly requirement and we have already completed this phase. This took place between April 1st and April 5th this year. Okay? Again, you will need to do this each and every year for the assignment process. It is an extremely important step and late registration does result in the loss of one lottery point. All students who plan to return to Vanderbilt for the upcoming fall semester should always complete the housing registration. This typically does occur in January um, at the very beginning of the spring semester and it's when you sign your housing contract. I do like to reinforce that there is no housing selected at this time. This is essentially you just telling us that yes, you plan to return to Vanderbilt for the upcoming year and you are going to need some type of housing, whether that's gonna be living on campus, possibly living in a Greek house, or maybe even, even applying to live off campus. So step two in this will be applying for the various processes. So we offer for this year, there will be five distinctive processes to participate in. Again, these run consecutive, uh, consecutively versus concurrently. So we will begin one process, we will complete that process, and then we will move on to the next one. So the processes in the order that they occur will be the residential college returning resident process for students who currently live in those buildings. And that actually begins this Saturday, April 24th. We are then gonna take about a two week pause for the exam and commencement period. And then we are gonna begin our six person and three person suite and apartment process, followed by the four person and two person suite and apartment process. And then we will complete the single room and the double room process in June. Okay. When it comes to apply for these processes, every process will have a very brief application that you submit. That ultimately then will make you eligible in most processes to form your roommate. For each process, you need to have a roommate group that can fill that space. So for example, if you want to be considered for a six person suite or an apartment, you have to have a group of six. We do not do random assignments for our upper division students. 
Um, we are happy to assist students with finding roommates and we do have that option available right now. Um, if you're someone who's out there looking for a roommate or potentially roommates, I definitely encourage you to fill out the roommate assistance form that's in the housing portal and Josh will help get you connected to other students that are also looking for roommates. Okay. Every application and roommate homemate group process opens at 12 a.m. midnight the day we start and it closes at 6 p.m. central time on the day that it closes. So just keep that in mind. The times are very important to make sure that you submit that within that window. We are typically giving three day periods for all of this to happen. So I'm first gonna do a quick walkthrough of the residential colleges returning resident process for any students that will be participating in that. This is, this is strictly for eligible students interested in returning to their current college. For these students, participation does guarantee a space back in their college. So step one will be completing the residential college returning resident application. If you are only applying as an individual looking to get a single room, this is the only step that you need to complete. If you are looking to maybe secure a double room or a suite, then you would wanna form the roommate or hallmate group with other applicants. Okay. In order to be eligible to form the roommate or hallmate group, you first have to have a completed returning resident application. That is the critical first step. So if I complete my application and then I'm gonna go wanting to request Ashley to live with me, I will not be able to request Ashley as a roommate until she does her returning resident application as well. Results in room selection for the residential college returning resident process. We will utilize a seniority driven random selection utilizing the point average of all individuals or groups to determine the room selection order. Okay. Students with higher Students in groups with higher point averages, they will have an earlier room selection time than, than students in groups with lower point averages. And then at room selection, students in groups can choose from any available space that they can fill during the room selection. Okay. So I wanna talk a little bit about the suite and apartment processes. Again, these will begin after commencement. So we will begin these on May 16th. So if you are not currently a student living in a residential college or a student with residential college return or priority, there's nothing more for you to do until after exams at this point, okay? Except begin getting your ducks in a row and start planning who it is that you would like to live with, okay? So we have two separate suite and apartment processes. The first is the six person and three person process followed by the four person and two person process. All unassigned suites and apartments will be available. This will include any in the residential colleges that remain available after the returning resident process. I imagine that there are going to be some that are left. Not every student that is currently there necessarily wants a suite. So I do anticipate that some suites will be available. Two-step process for all of these. Step one is submitting the application for that given suite or apartment type. So if you wanna participate in the six person, three person process, when that application opens, you will fill that out. And then you will form a roommate group with other applicants. Again, your roommate group must be able to fill the space. So if you wanna be considered for a six person apartment, you will need to have a group of six. If you're just looking for a three, you only need a group of three students. So continuing on, what we will do is once the application period closes and all of the roommate groups are formed, everybody that is part of a properly formed roommate group will be considered. We will take the point average of all members of the group. Groups of six will first be considered in the six person random selection. If they're unsuccessful in that, the group will then be considered in the three person apartment selection. And groups of three will only be considered for the three person random selection. So an example of how this would play out. Let's say for argument's sake that we have 25 six person suites and apartments that are available for the six person and on three person suite and apartment process. What we're gonna do is we are gonna start with the groups as our lottery runs that have the highest point average. Let's say that we have 10 groups. Of those 10 groups, they will be successful and they will be placed in a randomized order, essentially one to 10. We will then have 15 that remain. So we will then move down and we will consider groups with the next highest point average. And we will continue this until 25 groups are selected. 
Okay. And those students will then go to online room selection and they will make their selection at that point and they can choose from anything that's available. Unsuccessful groups will be informed and then they are just eligible to participate in future processes without penalty. So for the room selection for successful groups, group, as a reminder, groups with higher point averages will select their suites and apartments before groups with lower point averages. So if room selection starts at six and you have the six o'clock time, you have the first pick. Somebody else may have a time that starts at 6.02, followed by 6.04. Times cannot be adjusted. Okay, so you are welcome to choose at your room selection time or at any point until the room selection ends. Okay. We will then follow a very similar process to this for the four person and two person suite and apartment process. Groups of four will be considered for four person units first. If they're unsuccessful, they will be considered in the two person process and groups of two will only be considered for two person apartments. So this allows you to form your group. If you're successful, the whole group is successful and then you are eligible to select your suite or your apartment from whatever is available at your time of room selection. Once we finish up our suite and apartment processes, we move into the single room process. Any student who is unassigned is eligible to participate. Again, step one will be completing the single room application, followed by, if students are interested, forming a hallmate group with up to three other applicants. Okay. Forming a hallmate group simply links students together. So if you know Ashley and I would like single rooms, but we may wanna be able to pick single rooms that are in close proximity, we would wanna form a home, homemade group because if we're successful, we are then gonna be picking our rooms at the exact same time and can choose from what's available. Once again, we will conduct a seniority driven random selection utilizing the point average of all individuals or groups. And then successful groups and individuals can choose from any single room that's available come the time of their room selection. We then wrap up with the double room process. Same step again with completing that application. And then it is required to form either a roommate group with one other student to participate as a group of two or to form a roommate and hallmate group with three other students to form a group of four. We will once again run a seniority driven random selection utilizing the point average of all members and then successful groups will participate in the online room selection and can choose from any space that are available. Groups of two, they will select one double room and groups of four will select two double rooms at that time. So we talk a lot about forming roommate and hallmate groups. And this is a critical step in the process. Um, each and every year we have students that participate that they apply for a given room type, but they don't properly form their roommate group. And then they're not considered in the random selection. So this will require communication between you and your roommates to make sure that everybody has properly formed their group. So this is an example where I am requesting Ashley as my roommate. In order to do this, you will log into the housing portal, select roommate selection on the left side of the screen, followed by select roommates. Whether you're picking roommates or hallmates, it's all under the roommate umbrella, okay? You will wanna make sure that you select the fall 2021 as your term. And then you will see a variety of drop down menus, including roommate requests, pending requests, and the option to search. We encourage students to always search utilizing the VUNIT ID. We have several students enrolled that have the same first and last name, and we want to make sure that you have the correct roommate. Okay. So, in this situation, I have searched for Ashley and I have requested her. Her name is highlighted in bright yellow on my screen. And then you can clearly see underneath that it says that this is an unmatched roommate that Ashley has not requested me. At this point, we would not be eligible as a roommate pair for the process that we are participating in. What Ashley would then need to do is she would need to log into her portal. So here's an example of her screen that she would see in this situation. She would log in and she would see that she has a pending roommate request from me. What she then needs to do is click on the three dots that are located to the left of my name. And if she wants, to accept this request, essentially click on that icon that has the plus sign with the human that's there. Okay. Now, this happens sometimes. Students, again, won't search by the VUNIT ID. They may request someone that, that they don't intend to select. If this is a person that you don't know who they are, 
then you can certainly click on the trash can logo at the bottom to remove the roommate request. I would definitely encourage you, don't do that if that is a friend of yours. I would talk to that person beforehand. Um, there certainly are cases where people will just flat out reject roommates and won't have the conversation, but I certainly hope that you will do that before moving forward. If you ultimately want to select that person, make sure that you click on that logo so that you match. And then what you will see from both of our portals, if we both logged in, we would then see that we are both showing as each other's roommate request. And you will see the critical language at the bottom that says that your roommate group is fully matched. Okay. So let's talk about some odds and trends that we tend to see to help you all make some informed decisions moving forward. First and foremost, we can never guarantee a particular student or group a specific room assignment or building. Um, we're just simply not in a position to be able to do that. However, prior to each process, we will post available space counts in the housing portal under the help text section on the right side of the screen. So you'll be able to see before we get into the six person and three person apartment process, exactly how many six person and three person units are available for selection. We'll do the same before the four and the two, as well as the single rooms and the double room process as well. Okay. Past housing assignment process data is not super relevant for this year. Um, a, a few things to know is that we have a higher than usual number of students residing off campus for both this year and for next year due to higher enrollment and Blakemore House remaining offline for this year and for next year as well. Our housing inventory and processes have also changed significantly since we last conducted a standard assignment process. So with those factors playing in, past data would not would not be very representative of where I think things are gonna go for this year. What we can tell you though, is some historical trends that I don't necessarily foresee changing. We tend to see the vast majority of our rising third and fourth year students wanting to pursue traditional single rooms and suites or apartments. The majority of our second year students tend to secure traditional double rooms. This isn't to say that anomalies don't happen and there may be cases where rising second year students do secure suites or apartments, but these are just things that we tend to see year in and year out. I know that there has been concern this year with the suspension of the class cohort allocation for the residential colleges and some of our rising second year students concerned that they're not going to have an opportunity to secure a space there. I will tell you this, that there is a good portion of traditional double rooms that are in the residential colleges. Um, again, with the trends that we see with rising third and fourth year students not necessarily pursuing that option, I imagine that there are going to be groups of rising second years that are able to secure spaces there as well. Also, looking ahead, we will be opening another residential college next to Zeppos for the fall of 2022. So for the third year for our current first year students, the rising second year cohort. That will also give students another opportunity in future years to be able to secure spaces. So just something to consider as you're looking to make your decisions about what type of housing option you would like to move forward with. Okay. A little bit of wrap up and a few pro tips from us. First of all, I tell students all the time, shoot your shot. You can apply in all of these processes. You may get rejected from several of them. That's okay. Rejection, it, helps to build character and it doesn't hurt you moving forward in processes and you never know what could happen. So if, you, if you're a rising second year student in particular and you have a group of six, apply in that six person and three person process. You may end up getting lucky. You might be able to secure one of those types of units. If not, that's okay. You can then participate in the subsequent assignment processes to secure your space. I encourage students to beware of the rumor mill. Um, there are a lot of rumors that go on around uh, the housing assignment process. Um, and I will have students that will come in and say, oh, my friend told me to do this in order to get this. And it's completely inaccurate. And then they've missed an opportunity. Um, I would certainly direct any process and policy related questions to, to the professional staff. Students are wonderful resources to tell you what it's like to live in these facilities. I have not lived in these buildings, so I can't tell you about that. But I can certainly tell you about the information that I know and what you need to do in order to position yourself to hopefully get the type of housing that you want. If you have not done so already, review the guide to the housing assignment process. It is available on the O'Hare website. I know that it might not be the most riveting piece of literature that you've ever read, but it certainly provides all of the details and the dates and the deadlines that you need to be aware of. I encourage you to plan ahead. 
Don't wait until the 11th hour. Things happen, we understand that, but we also provide in the guide a full calendar of all of the events. So we understand that this process is happening after the spring semester concludes, and some of you may be traveling or going places where the internet may not be reliable. Telling us beforehand, we can help you out. After the fact, it puts us in a very difficult position and we may not be able to assist you. So please make sure that you're contacting us ahead of time and certainly planning. Be mindful of the dates and deadlines. When you look at the calendar, you will see that things tend to start moving and then they move very quickly. If you miss a deadline, it is very difficult for us to be able to assist at that point. Be intentional regarding your roommate selection. Okay? As continuing upper division students, you have the option to choose any other human that is a continuing upper division student that you want to live with, okay? And this can be a student of any gender as well. The only process that is gender specific is the double room process. You can only form roommate and homemate groups, same gender. But for all of our, for the residential colleges and for our suites and apartments, you can form a roommate group with anyone that you would like to, okay? But again, be intentional about who you are choosing to live with. Okay, you may have to have some hard conversations. I have some wonderful friends, love them dearly. I would never want to live with them because we would not be very compatible roommates. You want to find someone that you can live with. Maybe trying to get in the same building or on the same hall as your friend is a better option. And you know somebody else that would be a better person to live with. But please have that conversation with them. Don't let them request you as a roommate and then you use that trash can icon and don't say anything to them. Okay? I would also strongly encourage you if you have a romantic interest in somebody, do not choose to live with them, okay? Please be mindful of that. Um, we have had several cases where relationships have ended over the summer and then students no longer want to live together. It's very difficult for us to be able to move people. We, we tend to operate in, in a normal year at a very high level of occupancy, so it doesn't leave us with a lot of flexibility. If you need help identifying a roommate, we can certainly assist with that. Like I mentioned earlier, we do have a roommate assistance program and you can fill out that form in the housing portal. Be sure that your roommate and homemate group is properly formed in that given process. That is one of the most critical things you can do because if not, you won't be considered. Um, and I have seen cases where students might be forming a group of four and one person doesn't you know, accept a request from one of the other members of that group and it tanks the entire group. So I encourage students when you're applying in these processes, do your applications, form your roommate group, and then make sure everybody logs back in and then it clearly states that your group is fully matched. Okay. And please don't panic, no matter what happens, don't panic. We have room for all students who currently don't have a room assignment in on-campus housing. We are going to get you taken care of, okay? Even if we end up needing to assign you at you know, a point in the summer after the process is over because you missed the deadline, you missed everything, it happens every single year, okay? But I certainly don't want you to panic. We're definitely gonna get you taken care of. And I think we usually do a pretty good job of being able to get students into the type of housing that they're looking for. And oftentimes even with the roommates that they're looking for. Okay. Now we opened up our, our question portal. So there may have been some questions that have come in. I think Ashley's saying that there's a few, but I wanted to provide our contact information as well as she filters through some of those that may come in. Our general email address is o'hare at vanderbilt.edu. If you email into that account, it will get redirected to the proper person. So please don't hesitate. You can also email myself, Ashley or Josh directly. Um, I tend to work with the rising third and fourth year students um, as does Josh. Ashley handles the rising second year students. And if you're a student in particular that needs roommate assistance, Josh is the representative in our office that is assisting with that. So please don't hesitate to contact him. Ashley, what do you have? Um, so there's a couple of questions about when you enter into a process, can you say what building you prefer and things like that? Um, so once you apply for something, say you're applying for the six and three person apartment process um, as a group of six, you will have the opportunity to filter by building to see what's available during your pick time. You will have the pick of whatever is available during your particular pick time. If you're a group of six and you don't see what you would like in the six person apartments, you can split into two groups of three and pick how you wanna go. If you wanna go next to each other, you know, one on the sixth floor, one on the fifth floor, whatever. We don't assign. You pick the room that you wanna live in during your process. Um, 
Oh gosh, there's a lot of questions about residential college returner rights. If you have specific questions about returner rights, please email um, myself or Allison um, because people have very particular situations and we wanna make sure you get the correct information. Um, really quick going back to that, for residential college returner rights, we will be contacting students likely by the end of the day tomorrow with information on that process starting. Um, and we are gonna contact everyone that according to our records should have returner rights to their building. If you don't receive an email by the close of business tomorrow, please contact us Friday if, if you believe that there is an error in our records and then we can look into your specific situation. Um, yeah, and there's a lot of, you know, complexities with returner rights. So I don't wanna get into answering them all on here because I don't know what your particular situation is. So email us if you have questions and we're happy to go through that. Um, and someone said now that Warren and Moore are not considered a residential college. No, they are. Warren and Moore are both residential colleges as are Evrons and Ingram and Zeppos. Um, uh, there's some questions about likelihood of uh, rising second years to get singles. Historically, we have not seen a lot of success with rising second years getting singles. But like Allison said, shoot your shot, see what's available. This is a totally different housing process than we've done before. Usually we don't even allow rising second years to apply for singles. So go through the process, see what is available, have a backup of having a roommate um, in case you need to go through the doubles process. I would definitely say that with rising second year students, it's always good to have that backup plan. We just don't know what the demand is going to look like for single rooms this year. Um, so again, feel free to apply in that process, but if you're unsuccessful, you can default to the double room process. Um, so someone said, can we start applying for roommates, hallmates now? You can only apply for roommates, hallmates once a process has opened and once you have completed the application for that process. Um, so if you're trying to do something right this second, you will not be able to because no housing processes are open right now. Um, some people are saying, I qualify for a residential college returner. My friend is a, apply, or is a returner for another building. And we have two friends who've never lived in a residential college. Then if you guys all want to live together, the people who have returner rights to the building would have to forfeit those returner rights in order to participate in the housing process with their friends who do not have them. You can't pull somebody in to the process. It is only for you. Um, oh gosh. Um, somebody asked if rising sophomores are allowed to apply um, for the residential colleges. We're not applying for buildings, we're applying for room types. So residential colleges have several different room types. So there's six person apartments, there are four person apartments, there are singles and there are doubles. So if you have interest in living in the residential colleges, those are the processes you should participate in to see if you're able to select a space. But you're, there's not going to be a specific today is a res college application day. They are sprinkled throughout because we are doing it by room type, not by building. The only exception to that is for current residents for the returner process to those buildings. Um, someone said, why does it matter to look at floor plans? If the location we get assigned to after applying is completely random. It is not, you pick your space. You pick your space from what is available during your pick time. And we see students use floor plans in all sorts of different ways. You know, some students will, will print them out. They will get a running list of the rooms that they want and they will check to see if those are available during the online room selection. Other students, they're not as relevant for them, but they are certainly there for you to review. So that way you can make informed decisions during room selection. Um, does forming a roommate or hallmate group with someone already in a residential college increase your chances of being placed in a residential college? No. Again, only people who participate in the returner process have any sort of seniority in this. Everything else is going to be totally random. Um, and I will say this, along residential colleges for, you know, let, let's say taking myself, Ashley, Josh, and Paige right now, you know, let's say that, you know, I live in Zeppos right now, Ashley lives in Bronson Ingram and Josh and Paige, you know, they live over, they live in Lewis and we want to form a group of four. Well, Ashley and I would forego our returner rights then and we would just participate in that four person and two person process. If we're successful and we get told that congrats, you have secured a four person suite or apartment and you will pick at your scheduled room selection time, when we go to room selection, we can take from anything that's available, including any other residential college. So I am I am not bound to Zeppos. Ashley's not bound to 
Bronson Ingram. We can pick from anything that could be available, okay? Uh, what happens if too many students want singles? Uh, can roommates be matched without the student knowing? If too many people want singles, then only the number of people that we're gonna be able to fit into the singles get pick times, and everyone else will have to either participate in the doubles process or get on uh, the wait, the housing wait list. Again, we have space for everyone, uh, but you'll just, if you get on the housing wait list, you'll just require a little bit of patience while we work through it. Um, but we're not gonna say, okay, you two are now roommates during this housing process. You pick your roommate during the traditional housing process. If, if you get a room selection time in any process, that means that we have, we have a room for you for that specific type and you will be able to pick something. You may change your mind and say, thanks, but no thanks. And that's fine. You can walk away if you want. And then you can participate in a future process. You can't come back later on and say, now I want this. Um, that won't be an option, but you're only locked out of participating in future processes once you have an assignment. Uh, is the process the same for students who have studied remotely so far? Um, so people who studied uh, remotely for fall and spring? Yes. The process is the same for everybody. Just make sure you are cognizant of dates and times of when applications are going to be open. Some questions about roommate matching. So um, it's going to be based off of how y'all answered your housing registration and then submitting your roommate assistance request. So however you answered that, I'll match y'all based off of that and then kind of pair you together to see um, if you could fit or not, get in contact, and then let me know if you're not, and I'll continue to match you with people. Or if you successfully form a roommate group, let me know, and I'll take you off my list. Um, somebody said if you apply as a four person and you get rid, there's no four persons left during your pick time, and you're moved to two doubles, and you choose which people are in each double. Yes, again, you're placing. Well, the no, hold on. No, you will only if you get a pick time for a four person unit. That means we have a four for you. No, you're talking about doubles. Like Brit Scales, Vaughn. Got it. Got it. Um, uh, let's see. Which brands come buildings have suites? Vaughn, All Women, Scales, Co ed. Um, Where can the floor plans be found? They can be found in your housing portal. Does applying for a six person suite impact applying for a four person suite? Yes. So the six person, three person suite process is prior to the four person, two person process. So if you select a space during that six and three person process, you will no longer be eligible to participate in the four person, two person process. Um, Do you need to pair up with someone if you want to apply for a single room? No, uh, conform homemate groups, but if you want to apply for a single room, you can apply just as yourself and you're good to go. Yeah, the homemade group that again that is that is totally optional and that's just because we recognize that you know you may want a single room but you may still want to be able to live in the same building or in close proximity to your friends and this offers you that option um does it matter what time of day you apply for the process no um this isn't like a first come first serve situation in the traditional housing process you will just sign up with your group just make sure you sign up within the time period uh that is listed um, again, if you are successful in an application, can you still apply to late process? Once you have selected a space, you are secure in that space. You are not participating in anyone else. We'll probably have time for like two or three more here and then get you out of here. Uh, the floor plans are, you said the floor plans are looking on your housing portal, yes. Yep, when you log into the housing portal floor plans, look over to the right in the help tech section, there are links to all building floor plans that are now available for you to view. And we've put some notes on those floor plans to help you. A lot of them, they're bird's eye view to give you some context about, you know, which side of the building things are on. Cause I know sometimes people are very specific. It's not uncommon. I have some people that wanna make sure that they pick a room that, you know, it doesn't face east. They don't want to get blasted with the sun first thing in the morning to each their own, but you'll be able to, to see that. So when you're making your selection, you can choose accordingly. Um, do we need to pair up with someone if we want to apply for a single room? No, that's only if you want to live near one of your friends. If you want to just apply by yourself, feel free. Um, and it says if two people are living in singles, who want to live in singles in the res college form a roommate hallmate group, does that mean we may get one double? No. Um, in the returner process, you will pick from whatever is available and you will place yourself into those spaces. Um, if you're living with an RA, do you have to go through this process? No, you're, if you're living with an RA, you should be notified today or tomorrow 
that your housing assignment is complete. Um, Allison, is there any other big ones you want to answer? Right now? If, you, if your question did not get answered tonight, please, um, sh like I said, shoot me an email. I'm happy to figure out uh, what's going on in your situation. Um, Cause I know everyone's got different situations and different priorities. Um, the order of selection times is all random and um, we do it just based on seniority. It's randomized based on seniority. Yep. Oh Lord. Are there singles and doubles with a bathroom? Uh, sweet. The Vaughn and scales connected doubles have a share a bathroom. Um, but most of the traditional singles and doubles with bathrooms are reserved for students with housing accommodations. You'll be able to find a recording of this Zoom on the website tomorrow. Yeah, and I think, I think what's really important to take away from this, first and foremost, remember that once you leave, well, a lot of you will leave Nashville at the end of the semester, all of our times, they are central time. So if you're going to a different time zone, just make sure that you, you keep that in consideration when it comes to applying for processes and for your room selection time. Um, please remember that. Um, and also that if you go through a process and you form your roommate group successfully and you are given a room selection time for that process, it is keeping your group together. We're not splitting groups up at that point. So I know sometimes there can be this fear that, oh, we've applied, you know, as a, as a group of four, you know, in the double room process, you know, is there a way that only, you know, two of us would be successful and the other two wouldn't? No, you're, you're a group, we keep you together. That is done intentionally. Room selection, I saw room selection, uh, question about room selection time windows. Um, we tend to operate the room selection process based off of how many room selection times we need. They usually last, you know, they may last a couple of hours, but somebody's going to have the first room selection time and someone's going to have the last room selection time. Usually from the time when the last room selection happens, it's usually a, a 30 minute window before room selection closes. If you miss room selection and it happens, we understand that we are always going to contact groups that had a scheduled room selection time and didn't pick. Some just don't attend room selection because they changed their mind and they basically are saying, thanks for the offer, but no thanks. I want to pursue something different. That's fine. But we're going to email you just to make sure. And if you email us back and say, oh gosh, I completely lost track of time. You know, I still want my space. We will then assign you to an, a one that is available. Now the options may be much more limited um, because people typically are picking right around their scheduled room selection time or shortly after. Anything else coming in? Again, we want to help you all navigate this process. If you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I just ask, please try to be patient with us. We do tend to get a lot of emails and phone calls around this time of the year. Um, and this is the team right here that you're looking at that, that is managing, responding to those messages. So sometimes it can take us a little bit of time, um, but we will get back in touch with you. Happy to help you navigate the process and answer any more questions that you may have that come up. Have you guys seen anything else come in? No, because I was for room session process, but no, I said table for now. If you go through a housing process and um, say you go through a group living process and something happens and you are go abroad for the fall or you take a leave of absence and your other three people are still left in that space, they will be required to fill that space um, in your absence. Uh, somebody said, are there five person suites? Um, we don't anticipate five person suites being available after the residential college returner process. There are very few of them in the residential colleges. Um, so we do not anticipate um, there being a need for a process. But if you have a group of five um, and you're interested in them, you're welcome to email us. It is unlikely we will have them though. Yeah, there's only seven total five person suites and they're both lo they're located in more and more colleges. Um, and again, like Ashley said, they do tend to get selected during the 
returning resident process, which is why there is not a specific process for five person units. Um, the last one was, uh, is there a squatting process for Morgan Lewis? There is no squatting process for any um, housing this year. You cannot keep your exact same space. Now, if you go through that process and that room is there at your time of room selection, you're certainly welcome to pick it, but there, there is no specific room reservation process. Okay. Well, this will all be on the guide tomorrow. Um, so if you want to review it and listen to this riveting information yet again, if you'd like to just review the guide to make sure you know what's on the up and up, um, and what processes are coming. You may want to review the calendar, um, but this will all be up there tomorrow. And we really appreciate you guys sitting through and educating yourselves. Um, and we look forward to a very successful housing assignment process. Thanks y'all have a wonderful evening and good luck the rest of the semester.